Hello there and welcome to another YouTube video taking a look at another examiner's report, this time the most recent examiner's report for the MCS sitting coming up. So May was the last sitting and it's just been released, the new examiner's report, which has a lot of overarching features that we see very commonly across many papers. For example, candidates not, ask, not answering rather what was asked and Furthermore, we see some very specific mentions about financial reporting, which is very interesting because we can apply that. We can actually go about our revision and make sure we are aware. So, for example, financial reporting answers were very poorly done. And in particular, related party transactions was extremely weak. So that's our IAS 24. With this in mind, we can then make sure that we are aware of that IAS, how it works, how we present it in the exam to make sure that we don't end up in the camp that have those extremely weak answers. Now, you may have heard me say this before, but the F pillar is quite difficult to test at the MCS level. They're not going to ask any calculations of you, so that does leave a very narrow portion of content, which is namely going to be financial reporting and what implications that has for our overall sort of project or I don't know acquisition, whatever they throw in there as the primary context, they will often ask, okay, so now what's the financial reporting implications based on our decision? And they give a bunch of information and you may need, you may need to pull out whether it's a foreign currency aspect or whether it's about a related party and how we manage those transactions. That would be IAS 24, for example. And it could also be in terms of our principal versus agent aspects, such as IFRS 15. And there was a clarification on that last year as well. So with that in mind, keep your financial reporting knowledge quite high. You don't need to know the minutiae about every single little detail, but you do need to know the overview, what happens, what changes when you go from a singular entity to a group entity, for example. So our group accounts, of course. These are very easy for the examiner to ask and we need to be on top of those. For example, there's also a number of issues with other technical areas in particular, which is quite a surprise, project appraisal and performance measure, measurement. Sorry. And the P2 aspects that can be tested are namely in those areas. So essentially they're saying that a large chunk of the P pillar as well as the F pillar was quite weak. And E pillar tasks had some confidence from candidates, but a weak in pillars F and P, of course. So with that in mind, that does skew our revision towards F and P. Now, that's not to say that E is not important. The E is pretty much the foundation of a lot of the case study, but we do need to be aware that the E parts, the E2, will be the grounding theory, but there'll be a number of questions, of course, about F2 and P2, and that's often gonna be reporting, often gonna be performance measurement. So knowing the different you know, methods of measuring performance, why the balanced scorecard is good for a company that wants, say, I don't know, a good reputation or a branding recognition, that kind of aspect of the non-financial is gonna be really important, and that's why we might use the balanced scorecard, for example, and project appraisal is very surprising. You know, make sure you know your internal rate of return, all that jazz to make sure you can actually you know, demonstrate what the project's best or the best decision based on the projects available, for example. So with that said, that is the overview of the latest examiner's report for the MCS. And I will go into more depth in a later video about the more specific aspects that come up in this exam report. But with that said, thank you very much for listening and I will see you in the next video. Very much good luck in your studies and I'm sure you'll do great in the exam.